So today we're going to be talking about cattle, cattle handling facilities within a barn. Uh, typically looking at a couple of different tobacco barn examples. Um, let me see. Let me just check the cat. All right. So it seems to be good. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and close that out. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. So, you know, we're looking at why we have handling facilities. It's going to be the same goal, whether we're in a tobacco barn or putting it next to our pastures. It's going to be to, man to achieve our management goals. So one of it is going to be to keep ourselves safe, to keep the cattle safe. They've, we put a tremendous investment in these cattle, and we don't want to lose that investment. And it's to save time and energy and limit uh, our aggravation. So I always say we're trying to not use the four-letter alphabet when we're working cattle and, and work cohesively as a unit with our family as well. Um, and so give just a general overview, overview of a uh, presentation outline. We're going to talk about the natural cattle movements, uh, designing a handing facility, um, parts of facility, some, some specific considerations and examples and design options uh, from a couple of farm business that we have done in the past. So looking at cattle movement, we, we had talked about, and I didn't talk about this last time, we're gonna talk about this time around though, is looking at our flight zone. You know, when we can, how we push these animals. So moving from position, in this case, A to B, how we can start and stop the movement of these animals, just in how we uh, position our body. So we get in front of the shoulder, we're gonna, of the animal, most likely going to stop them or potentially be turning this animal, as opposed to where we're standing at position A or B, we're behind the animal, we're pushing that animal forward. So trying to take advantage of some of the natural ability and behaviors of the cattle to move, to help us move them. Uh, so the five principal animals behavior. So cattle like to come, come back the way they came. So we see this in numerous situations when we're trying to work these animals. If you're trying to push them, they're going to run back, run back at you. And actually they like to, cattle want to go around anything that has been pressuring them. So we can use this a little bit to our advantage to help us move these animals as well. Uh, when you're moving these animals, cattle want to see you. They want to see what threat there is, what, um, what's trying to push them. Uh, and they also want to go with other, other cattle. So they have that gregarious nature. We want to take advantage of that and try to move as many animals as possible. Uh, this is why a lot of times when I say people, if they're using the AI, they need to synchronize them because instead of going out and trying to get up one animal, which would be difficult, you just get up a whole herd and do it all at once. allows for increased efficiency. And cattle typically only process one main thought at a time. So uh, this can be, uh, for a lot of cattle, it, it, you don't want to overexcite them. Don't want to overexcite them, and then you'll get into a situation where either they'll get hurt or you're going to get hurt. So you try to limit uh, what challenges are facing the cattle as you're moving them. So cattle are herd animals. We, we know that. They prefer to move in the group. We need to take advantage of that gregarious nature and push them as a group. Um, isolating the cattle will cause them stress and it will cause you stress and so that's why I, again said you know if we want to move them as a group try to get them naturally going uh, they prefer to see where they're going and they're generally like I said a little bit earlier they're going to try to turn around uh, and come back where they came from so if we're, if we're moving them into a barn we want to try to take advantage of this natural ability as we move them into the barn then if we want to have our our alley and shoot situated so that we take advantage of this uh, this, this desire to come back out, or even if, if we're trying to use a bud box potentially, taking advantage of this ab ability or desire of cattle to come back the way they came. Um, and when the handles move opposite of the flow of cattle in an alley, it actually encourages the cattle to move forward. And we kind of see that in this slide here where we want to see the return path of our flight zone. We're moving down an alley directly parallels to the cattle against what would be the flow. That can help help encourage some of that movement forward because they want to get around whatever is, is coming. So that can be one way in which we're trying to move our cattle forward. And then we see our, our return path of leaving that flight zone of the animals to go back to the chute. And so taking advantage of that, that their natural or behavioral instincts uh, to, to help us work the, the animals. Um, when you look at our handling facilities, uh, we need to identify, you know, we're, we're creating our cattle handling plan and know what you're or planning to do. So we need to identify the cattle that are going to be worked, the ages and type of cattle, 
and the number of cattle being worked. So the number is very important as far as the specifications. We need 20 square foot per animal for having cow calves in our holding pens. Uh, the ages and types, uh, everything is going to be, it's dependent on the size and type of cattle. If you have Angus cattle are gonna be smaller than your Charlet cattle. If you have Charlets, you might need a facility that's gonna be instead of 60, recommended 60 inches, you might wanna go to the 70, 72 inches as far as your alley, your sidewall heights. And so that's something to keep in consideration. Uh, Second, when you're planning a cattle handling or creating this cattle handling plan, you know, how many people are going to be working the cattle? Uh, there was a facility I went to in Boyle County where we had to have, and it was something that was going to be replaced, but the way it was operating um, originally, you had to have at least seven people to work cattle just to act almost as gates and to really create a dynamic flow. And so at that point, you know, that's, that's a lot of people. A lot, it's, it's hard to find that many people to work cattle. So, uh, you know, how many people do you want to work in your facility? How many people do you have to work in your facility? Uh, additionally, you need to make a, a list of what are your needs and your wants for your facility and determine what types of features are, again, your needs or your wants. You know, what are we, what are we working on here? We're we working on our cattle health. We're deworming these animals. Are you tagging, preg testing? You know, what's taking place and what do you need for your facility to function correctly? Um, you know, everybody wants something with a double alley, but do you really need to have that for if you have 50 cows? Probably not. And, you know, create a prioritized list of these features. So you don't necessarily have to have a uh, palpation cage. Maybe you can just have a bar behind you to prevent the animals from coming up uh, to some degree. And so, again, just looking at what, what are your needs and what are your actual wants for your facility? Let's see. Uh, cattle handling facility design, design considerations. Uh, number one is going to be safety because if you or the animals get hurt, you know, it, it, it's not functioning properly. Or it's, yeah, it's not functioning at all. So, you know, safety is the number one concern for both you and the, the animals. Uh, economics, so we can't, we can't, you know, we can, we'd prefer to have a Cadillac facility, but oftentimes we don't need to have that. But uh, on, that, on that same note, we don't want to oversimplify. There are certain design specifications which we have to have uh, for making our facility be, to be functional. So we have to have that 20 square foot for cows in a holding area or the 12 square foot for animals in the crowding pen. So those are certain design criteria we cannot oversimplify. Uh, looking at siting, we're gonna talk about this here in a second. This is also important, you know, making sure we have this located in the area that's gonna be desirable for us to, to work cattle. And uh, another consideration, can anything be reused or repurposed? So if we have, um, you know, guardrail, pipe, is there certain things in which we can reuse or repurpose for our facility to help it to help it be cost effective. All right, so talking about cattle handling, handling and site selection. So we have to have vehicle access, you know, the ability to unload and load animals. This is, this is important because um, I talked to a producer, he could only load out his cattle. Uh, he couldn't load out his cattle this time of year because the ground is so wet. He had no way to really effectively work his, well, to load, work his animals, also get them up to sell them at this time of year. So, you know, that's something that has to be considered. You need to have a loadout, unload area. You know, what size of truck are you bringing in? So we consider most of the time it's going to be a crew cab and, and cattle, 20 foot, 24 foot cattle trailer. Um, you know, there's certain specifications for having a, a proper radius to turn around or even back up. Um, but if you're bringing a semi, that's a completely different scenario than if you're looking at a truck and like I was alluding to earlier, earlier, having all weather access. Can you only access it when it's dry in July and August and September? Or is it something that we're trying to have year round to be able to load out animals if we need to take animals to the vet, if there's an issue, or if we have to load them out for one reason or another to sell them, you know, all weather access is important. Or something like that. Um, I think. Oh, uh, is there a question? All right. Um, so another, another thing is, you know, like with real estate, location, 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 it's uh, you want to have something that's central to all your pastures can be easily accessed. You don't, ideally you don't want to spend half a day just trying to get the cattle to your working facility. So you want it to be near a row where you can, like I said, easily access it, but not, you still want it to be somewhat secure. So you don't want any unauthorized access. So it's kind of, it's kind of a trade off there. 
But uh, as you get closer and closer to your actual facility, uh, you want your fences to increase in strength and resilience as you get closer and closer to your actual shoot. So, because the animal is going to be pushed closer and closer and closer together, and there's an increased likelihood that they're going to try to go back where they came. Uh, looking at utilities, you know, water, electric, if you're doing AI or, or you know, having a bed out there, those can be essential. Uh, electricity for having, you know, lights, especially at night if you're trying to cab or whatever may be taking place. Uh, looking at, you know, talking about site selection still, like our drainage, you know, ideally we're not going to be at the bottom of the hill because that's where a lot of water is going to collect. Uh, we, we see around this state, well, even the past month, uh, talking to Matt Dixon, the weather department, so usually we get three inches of rain in February. Uh, this time around, it's one of the fifth wettest Februarys on record where we had six inches of rain. So, you know, the water at the bottom of the hill can become a, a serious issue, uh, and drainage comes a serious issue when you're selecting these sites. You know, some, if the barn's already built, you can't change that, but it's something just to think about uh, for future expansion or uh, expansion for your, up your operation. From a lighting standpoint, you know, if we can take advantage of night, natural lighting, that we try to do that if, all, if at all possible. Uh, we're trying to get light uniformity as well because we don't want to get essentially hot spots. Uh, it can be just as bad as having a dark spot. We don't want the cattle, don't want to enter a dark barn. Uh, getting a uniformity of light can also be important. Having, you know, as somebody who AIs cattle in November and December and even in June, July, uh, having shade, rain, rain protection, protection from the wind, uh, for your working facility can be important, which is why you know, we're looking at putting some of these in the cattle barns. And if we have, you know, overhang can be important on some of these structures uh, to prevent some of that wind and rain from getting into where you're actually working the animals. And we're trying to use these uh, underutilized barns uh, for production purposes. So our ha cattle handling facility components, you know, once going over this, once again, looking at uh, having a couple of holding pins or sewing pins. Um, these would be about uh, 10 to 12 foot wide, ideally. Uh, looking at our access and sorting alleys, we'll get this again going to be about, about 10 foot wide. Uh, working through our crowding, our crowding pin, uh, our crowding our tub, and then running on down to our shooter alley, which you ideally want to be about 20 foot long, going to our head gate and our uh, squeeze chute. Um, potentially, we could also have a scale or a loadout shoot as well. So we, we ideally want to have some type of loadout system available for these animals. Um, so the head, gate, the head gate, in my mind, is the most important feature. It's the minimum requirement for working cattle. Um, minimum requirement, you have to have a head gate. I talked to a producer, and he was wanting to uh, just use a couple boards to hold the cattle. Just minimum, just for safety considerations and ease of operation, you have to have a head gate. You know, they make ops with a manual self-catch. It can, can be hydraulic if they're running a fair number of cattle. And I, I prefer the fully opening ones. That way you can work mixed sizes. Personal preference, disclaimer, personal preference, uh, fully opening one for working bulls and mixed sizes. Uh, so we have two different options. The self-catch on the right and this one on the preferred on the right is actually self-catch as well or can be. You use the spring system. Uh, the one on the right, it just allows you to work mix those mixed groups can fully open and close. Uh, gives you a little more options, I think, when you're working these animals. So you can also you can work adjust the one on the right, but I think it's I, I personally prefer the one on the blue one. Uh, the squeeze chute. Now, I'm kind of blowing through these a little quicker than I would normally, but uh, we've gone over this in the last presentation. Uh, you know, it's to restrain cattle, it's to decrease the stress. This can also be effective uh, for when you're working animals, especially if you're trying to get the vaccinations. Uh, this can be essential in my mind, essential for when you're trying to work these animals and give them vaccinations. Uh, the palp cage, another one that's in my mind, it you know, isn't necessarily required, but it is uh, beneficial if you're doing a lot of pregnancy testing, if you're doing AI synchronization, uh, if you're doing semen testing of bulls. Uh, it can help you avoid having unwanted help and allows you know, just easy access uh, for these activities, for these production purposes. Uh, looking at our tub, whether it's 10 foot, 180 degree, this 180 degree tub, or 12 foot, uh, you only wanna put three or four cows in there. Uh, I talked about this in the last one, but I just wanna reiterate, 
you know, you put five or six, you try to put five or six in there, put a whole bunch of animals in there, and, and it's not going to be quite as effective uh, at uh, moving, uh, at achieving the throughput you desire. If you put three or four in there, you get a better, you get a better throughput because you, you're, it's easier to push those animals. And they see that opening, they're more likely to go out. So I think don't overload your tubs. I see this uh, on numerous situations or numerous times. Uh, looking at our corral chute slash alley. Again, we want this to be 20 foot long, approximately 20 foot long. We want to have a backstop at the end. We're going through uh, from our tub into our alley. A backstop would be ideal. Um, and backstops throughout to kind of help push the animals and move them on forward. So this this talks about the minimum width that your alley needs to be. If you're looking at cows, uh, about 28 inches is recommended. You can have some that are going to be um, larger cows, but might might be 30 inches. So it could be somewhat breed dependent. And they say 60 to 72 inches tall. I, I'd more I'd lean more towards recommending 72 inches because I've seen uh, some of the cattle think they're gazelles and can jump over anything. So I I'd, I'd, I'd suggest strongly. Uh, having those be 72 inches. Uh, what, one of the systems that takes advantage of this, the gregarious nature of the cattle is the double alley. So they can move through together as animals, as, as two, two animals, and you have a much bigger hole or opening for these animals to go through. So instead of being about 28, 30 inches opening for the animals to, to go through, you, you now have a 60 inch opening. So that gives the animals a little more flexibility. It's, I've seen this system used for bulls and it works just great. But, uh, you know, it's one of those that has additional costs associated with it. And so, you know, is this needed on every farm? Not really. Does this work if you're having a high number of animals? Yes. And also, you know, you can put more animals in here and it's sort of the length of shoot that you're going to need as well. So you don't need as long as an alley so, uh, to fit, you know, three or four or five animals in there, depending on the overall length that you have available to you. Um, holding pins. You know, they, they can be good for holding pins and sorting pins. They can be good for when you're uh, just queuing up different groups of animals. And so we want these to, again, be about 20 square foot per animals. And we have all these dimensions, so I, I'm kind of just blowing through it uh, quickly. But we have all these dimensions available. You know, if you, if you need some recommendations or you want to just draw something out, just tell us, you know, we need the number of animals, the size, the age, you know, all those different design considerations we I gave talk to you about earlier. Uh, if we have those, we can kind of get a couple different designs for you and say, this is what we recommend, or this is this is an option for you to use. Um, the alley width, access alley width. So what I want to specifically talk about here is, you know, it needs to be a maximum of 10 to 12 feet. And the reason I say that, you see in this uh, one picture here where this individual, he's able to, you know, go with both arms wide out and push these cattle as easily. So if he's Typically, you know, if they're about six foot tall, you have a six foot arm span, a wingspan. And so that gives you about two foot on each side where you can try to stop the animals and prevent them from getting by you. It makes it a little easier to stop them from animals getting by you. And 12 foot is about the maximum. So you know you have uh, maybe, maybe four, four foot, you know, depending on your, your, your total wingspan, maybe about, um, you know, three to four foot on each side of you. And so if you go to 16 foot, you're going to have more space for the animal to get around you. It's a little harder to actually push these animals as well. Um, so really, I just wanted to reiterate, just make that maximum for your, your access alley be 10 or 12 foot. Um, design, design details. So you need to have a cattle handling plan. We looked over our site selection. Uh, determine what kind of head gate or squeeze chute that you want. And there's other facility considerations. You do have adequate alley length or you're holding pins, uh, the proper dimensions for the animals which you're going to be, be working. And then uh, sketch a concept of the drawing, get, get time to get feedback on these. So, you know, really we like to have time to, um, you know, whenever, whenever producers come to me and say, oh, well, I need a drawing for a facility, I was like, well, when do you want it? Well, they always say, well, yesterday. And so I, I try to get it to them. I'm like, okay, I'm going to build this as soon as I get it. It's like, well, get some time, get some feedback from others. Uh, it can be, can be helpful. Um, it's not something you want to make on a, a whim kind of decision. This is something you want to strategically plan out uh, for your facility. Uh, so some of the, looking at uh, what we really need for our facilities. So at least 
50% of our boards, we're getting board fencing, at least 50% of our height needs to be board. So two by eight boards, two by sixes, at least 50% of that total height needs to be board. So that's nominal dimensions on those boards there. Um, and if you want to, you know, I've always wondered uh, for this part of the, for this state, you know, is it really, really, really essential for working 50 animals? Is it really essential to have a completely enclosed sidewalls? I'd say not necessarily for only working 30 or uh, 40 animals. It's not necessarily essential to have completely enclosed sidewalls. Uh, but you can, if you want to add two by fours in there as well, you can add two by fours. It's, uh, at the end of the day, it depends on however much you want to spend upon your facility. Um, pipe is also a good option. If you're, if you're using this for a cow-calf operation, I'd be a little hesitant to say maybe we need to look at the disposition of our animals. Um, maybe maybe a couple of, if you happen to have this type of facility to work your cattle, maybe maybe we need to consider selling some just based upon disposition, or maybe there's something we need to change within the operation management wise. Uh, guardrail, you know, if we can get get a hold of guardrail in a cost effective manner, uh, this can be a, a good option for a lot of producers. Uh, they do make covers for the edges of the guardrail. I've seen on numerous situations where cattle have been cut up if by the edges of the guardrail. Um, this can cause a fairly decent amount of damage to the animal. So putting some type of cover over there uh, can limit that. And I think that's called a guardrail guard maybe, or uh, if you want more information on that, I can probably find it again for you. Uh, back, backstops, backstops are important. So if we're as working this animal, trying to get achieve a better throughput for these animals, uh, we want to have, a, you know, there's a lot of different options for a backstop. We have a one-way gate here. Uh, you know, it could be something as simple as a chain to be a backstop. They can still get get down under a chain sometimes. Uh, there, here's a couple other backstops and some of the different costs associated with them. Um, it, it, it's just it's another one of those. Really, just depends on how much you want to spend. Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, a pipe would work, but uh, you know, there are there are a couple different options for backstops. Scale selection. You know, there are a couple different types. Um, electronical Electronic mechanical beam, ones that work one animal or a group of animals. Uh, if you have, we have designs for a more cost-effective scale system. I built it yourself for producers, and it's going to be about uh, seven hundred dollars for by the time you spend on uh, approximately uh, four hundred dollars, three, three to four hundred dollars on load cells, another three to four hundred dollars on materials. You can build your own scale system for about seven hundred dollars. So if you have any producer interested in that, uh, we can get them get them some information on actual plans and drawings for completing their own scale system. Uh, loadout shoot, all I really want to state about this is try to look at your, your maximum rise for these. It's about maximum, maximum is four inches per foot. Um, say this here is three and a half inches per foot. You know, you really want to stay below four inches uh, as far as rise. You don't want your cattle essentially climbing into the trailer, climbing a ladder into the trailer. So keep that at least three, three and a half inches for every inches of rise for every foot you have. Want to reiterate again, you know, gate selection, how do cows get out? Most of the time, 90% of the time I've seen it, so they're trying to go under or over gate, not typically going through a gate. If they're trying to go through a gate, you probably need to sell them for disposition reasons. Uh, there, you know, there's lots of different names and types, of, and I harped on this last time. There's economy, standard, bull gate. Those mean nothing, because it's just, they can put anything essentially brand name on there. It really depends on the gate, or it depends on the gauge. And so for typically your, most of your typical gates, well, they might call economy or regular gates will be 16 gauge. You know, if you're working cattle through your facility, you probably need to be looking close to 14 gauge, something a little thicker, um, a little more resilient to handle the challenge that you get from your cattle. Um, let's see here. One, uh, oh, here's another gate. Well, so this one has, if you get a heavy duty gate, you wanna make sure you get three hinges to provide a little bit additional support and make sure at least one of them is turned upside down so the cattle can't push out uh, underneath the gate and knock off the hinges because then you go from having, then you'd have two problems, knock down gate and cattle are out. So that can be, that can be important. Make sure that hinge is flipped upside down. I think most producers would do this, but just uh, something to make sure that they do. Uh, looking at looking at our gate dimensions, nominally they're going to be 12 foot dimensionally when we're making our plans, but uh, this will actually vary. So it'll actually be shorter by two to four inches, just to allow for connections 
and for our hinges. So that's something to keep in mind when you're when you're planning and helping producers design for facilities or when we're making plans as well. It, is, it varies by the gate and the company. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, so for this example, you know, what we, what we had here was just we had two pins that are 12 foot wide. I'm trying to see if we're just making a really simple, quick plan. It's like, well, two pins, 12 foot wide. Well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is when we get, get into that uh, actual drawing, it, and this is why I like to get 3D drawings, is that when we plan and putting on our six inch posts or then putting on our anomaly uh, two by eight boards in there, well, then, then now that space that was 12 foot now becomes 11.25 11, 11 foot. So we can't quite swing a, a gate 180 degrees as we originally planned. So that's something we need to keep in mind is that when we're designing these, you know, the actual dimensions, you know, getting a higher level of detail can actually help when you're making these plans. So if we do it on the front end, a little more work on the front end, it makes for a better facility design. Um, so again, from a facility design, we're asking cattle if they're trying to, this was not so bad, but we're asking cattle to enter a dark barn. Um, essentially, you know, for, for what they, for, it seems like to me, what, uh, if we're trying to get them to enter a barn, they, they've made this simple math in their head that entering that barn is like running out of Toronosaurus Rex. It's just, it's a scary environment for them. So we have to provide adequate lighting for them as well. Uh, we talk about our lighting. Uh, this is a Midwest Plan Service. This is their recommendations for lighting for housing, calving barns. Again, we have all this information. We can provide this to producers. You know, what, you know, looking at what do we need for our lighting. So, watch, you know, watch per square foot. And the only thing that's lacking really from the Midwest Plan Service is because it was done, you know, 20 some odd years ago, they don't really have anything for LED, LED lights. So, maybe that's something we'll have to update here in the near future. But uh, this, this gives us, you know, a general lighting recommendations, foot candles, uh, what we need for a barn. So that's something, and we want that to be a uniform lighting, like trying to avoid those hot spots from the barn. Um, talk a little bit, you know, we look at the LED fixture here, and depending on our, our beam angle and the height, uh, talks about, you know, how much, how much light are we getting down or, or, or to our target distance. So depending on, you know, where we hang from the barn, it's going to be 10 foot, 15 foot, you know, where exactly we're hanging depends on, and the angle, beam angle, depends on how much light we're actually getting on that targeted uh, surface. So, you know, there's a couple, and there's always gonna be a little bit of variation with the, you know, depending on what type of light and the level of light that we wanna achieve within the barn. We do have those minimum design specifications uh, if the producer desires them. So looking at a couple of facility examples. So this is getting to the meat and gravy of it. All right, so one of the, one of the uh, designs I didn't talk about last time that could be used in a barn is gonna be a simple working facility design. Uh, it's gonna be a bud box. So not, not a lot of people are using this in the state of Kentucky. I've talked to one or two producers who are. And if you're doing, uh, if you're working cattle by yourselves, they say this is a desirable option. So, you know, really you want these to be 12 to 14 foot wide. That's the maximum, maximum about 20, 20 30 foot deep. Uh, this is, and with this type of system, we're taking advantage of that natural ability cattle to go back the way they came. And you really don't want to overload these systems. So again, you maybe want three or four animals in this in in here, and then going out to your alley. Uh, looking at how this is done, going from you know one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, you're slowly pushing these animals into your bud box, moving around, shutting your gates, uh, pushing these animals in, and so trying to really slowly and methodically, you know, work these animals, but take advantage of that that desire the animals to go back the way they came and they're finding their own escape routes. And so we could run this out the side of the barn. We can, you know, turn curve our alleys as they run back the way they came or run straight out the other end of the barn. And so, you know, they have a design here for the butt box where they're using a double alley as well. So again, they allow them for more access and will make it a little easier for the animals to go through that, so that to, to the access alley. Um, so uh, having, it, having it drawn out here, we show, uh, cattle come in here, you push them into the bud box, you come behind them, shut your gate, uh, go slow, slowly move up, you're going to have them work around and they're going to try to go back out their access, out, out your alley. So that'd be, you know, the ideal situation. And then you just slowly and methodically work your next couple of animals through your facility and, you know, trying to take advantage of that flight zone, working the animals out 
And so it can be an effective way of moving your animals. If it, you know, working as individually in this situation, you're working with one person in the back, working the butt box, another up front working your head gate. Uh, having an access gate, so I almost grabbed but having an access gate uh, right about here, you know, where you can go back, back and forth up to your alley, having a, a, a backstop here at the end of, your al end of your alley would also be ideal, so you can queue up those animals and go get your next set. Uh, an access gate to run back and forth. You need to run back and forth to work with these animals, or if you got a self-catch head gate, that could be essential for producers as well. Uh, so, you know, going back, you know, the simplest working facility design for the small herds uh, is going to be this type of system. And we, we, we went over this a little bit last time, just where you have your holding pens leading up to your crowding, your crowding tub, and then working, working on down your alley to your head gate. So, simplest design, we're going to use this modification of this for our cattle handling barn. So this is another 3D design of this format. Uh, so what we have here is something we made up for producer, I think it was in uh, Mason County. Um, he, he said he was building a brand new tobacco bar, or he had a bunch of tobacco barns getting blown down uh, by some storms last March and he's wanting to rebuild. And so he was going to have, you know, complete access to each alley uh, on both ends of the barn but he wanted to have put his working facility, he had a way to work his animals and sort some degree outside, and he said he wanted to keep that, but um, he wanted the ability to hold the animals, potentially sort if he needed to, within his to, to, uh, 40 by 96 foot, foot tobacco farm. So we have 12 foot, 16 foot center alley, then 12 foot uh, side alleys. Um, and so he wanted the ability to sort, and this is, this is what one of the designs which we came up for him. And so what this does is we're trying to maintain where you can still pull down the main two alley or two alleys, but has working, working shooting facility off to the side. So the way this works is we're going to bring this cattle down this leftmost alley and progressively just close gates. We have the gate at the end of the barn, another gate here, where if he wants to run them directly into the, the tub, he can. Uh, zooming in on this a little more, we can see that, you know, in this corner, you know, I, I left this up to the producer and we asked if we didn't draw it, but you know, ideally we'd have, instead of having a dead corner, we would have a, uh, you could put another gate there to help angle the cattle, help limit the, where they, where they just sit, pretty much sit there and look at the, stand there and look at the corner. So put another gate there to help the animals flow in there. But we had another gate that swings there, we could push it and close the cattle in. We actually included a couple, you see in the picture, we have a couple posts here uh, we, we actually narrowed that down, so cattle go around that corner and it narrows down to about 10 foot uh, for this facility. And I think we had about a 10, a 10 foot, either 10 foot or 12, I think it was a 10 foot tub we put in this facility as well. Um, and so then seeing if we progressively close, okay, run them down the tub and the cattle pushed around into this facility. Um, and so another, another option for this was so he either moves cattle directly in, but he gave each one of those pins. So uh, the green arrows where the cattle can enter, uh, the red arrows where it can easily flow out. You know, these are 12 foot fence, um, but uh, they're oriented. So the cattle come into the first one and can go out the second one and it can hold up to about 19 animals, uh, 19 cows per se, uh, approximately, uh, minus the space where we put in this, in this scenario, we just threw in a water tank if you wanted to have that as an option. Um, so this is 16 by 24 foot for that pin. Uh, had another, a second smaller pin. So if you wanted to hold nine or 10 animals, uh, you could do that as well. It'd be a little harder. You'd have to actually run them back out the way they came to the, to the first gate, to this uh, gate up here, and then push them back down when he wants to work through the facility. But this is just a, if you wanted to hold a smaller group of animals. Um, so for this pin right here, the one directly next to the chute, where they could also technically enter and exit this area, we said he could use this to hold and sort his animals, but I'd actually prefer to use it for, like, if he had to, uh, I'd want to use it for veterinary. If you're right there, usually your uh, capture mechanism is on the right side of your, your chute anyway. So uh, that'd be where I'd have my veterinary supplies if I need a table. You know, I might not have cattle in this area. I might just have it be a working area. Maybe I have my veterinary supplies or other materials that would be needed uh, for working this, for working the animals. Uh, and the reason that we have it directly 
you know, close to that post as possible, or the shoot actually close to this post as possible, was so that he could still use a kickout mechanism. Uh, we assume that the kickout mechanism was going to be on the right side, so we still have plenty of space to allow for that mechanism to function if he needed to. So if a cow got down, he would still be able to open it up and have enough space to uh, get the animal out if he, if he had to. Um, and then he's got this last pin here. The last pin here is just, again, where he can hold and sort about 19, 18, 19, 20 animals, you know, depending on their size. And so, you know, this, this gave him a fair number of options. And we just, that's something we uh, continually try to produce, have for producers. Like, well, you know, it doesn't have to be a fixed facility. We can have a number, you know, of ways to capture, like, different, you know, maybe up to one, two, three, four different groups inside your barn here. So he, he was running a fair number of cattle. So if he wanted to, he could put all, you know, almost, you know, let's see, um, 90 animals in there, hypothetically, plus he has his alley. So he, he had a, a uh, fair number of options with this system, you know, but ideally we'd only work a couple, you know, five or six through our tub at a, well, three or four through our tub at a time. Um, but he also had the ability to recapture and resort these animals. So technically we could open up this first gate here and we can run them, funnel them back into the smaller pen if needed. So recapture them and then run them back through the shoot if we needed to, or, you know, same with the next pin, uh, as cattle are coming, exiting the chute, going down through here, cattle exit the chute and also be funneled into a larger pin within the barn. So again, giving the producer options, not that he had to do this system, but it, it gives you options for if you need to recapture a rework animal, have two different groups, potentially larger calves, smaller calves, whatever, whatever it may be. Um, we also, you know, because we was building a brand new barn, went ahead and threw a couple uh, frost feed fountains in, in the barn. So one was located towards the end of the alley. Um, and another was, uh, the other two, one was towards the, uh, the back of the chute. And then one was towards this one water up here. You know, not that he had to have these. We said, you know, this could be an option. We, we said, you know, we, we talked about putting permanent waters in, but Morgan and I kind of shy away from that because we didn't want, we didn't want animals to, this isn't, uh, we want animals to be permanently. This is for temporarily locating your cattle if you need to work on the next day. This is just a temporary solution. Uh, so we didn't want him to really utilize those all the time. So this is a temporary option for him to, to have water within the barn. Um, and we could also model lighting. So we didn't model any lighting sources for this barn, but we could also do that as well. But what we felt that water, having water in the barn, if he's rebuilding it, was going to be uh, central for him as well. And so, because it, because it was going to be a tobacco barn, and a uh, 40 by 96 foot tobacco barn, we thought it was important that he still be able to completely access. So technically, if he needed to, if he needed to park equipment in here when he wasn't using, using his cattle working facility, he could park equipment in here. He has a main 16 foot center aisle if he needs to drive down that center aisle. He has the side alley as well, so he used this side alley, and he also still uses this uh, center alley here for moving his equipment, for either parking his equipment or moving tobacco wagons or anything else he needs to move in and out of his barn, he can still do that with relative ease and he just has to move these waters out, but he can drive straight through the facility and his, his actual shoot system is only taking up one of his alley, one of his 12 foot alleys. So uh, we try to leave as much space and open, open available to him as possible. Uh, so this is just, we never actually went and saw this facility or this farm, but this is just an option. They said this was potentially what they wanted and so we, we just drew it up for him. Um, you know, we, we, for simplicity, we had drawn in everything with gates, but we said uh, that he could have used, you know, two by two by eights or two by sixes as well within his barn on the side walls uh, if, he, if he did not want to use gates. Uh, but, you know, again, that was, we didn't draw that up in AutoCAD. We just threw that in PowerPoint after the fact said, yeah, you can do this. Also with, you know, boards, it's the same concept. You know, the, the flow would be the same either way. It's just where we can save a little bit of money, potentially. And so one of the things I didn't talk about last time, I kind of want to uh, talk about this time, is that you know, we, 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 have costs, we have costs for all these structures. So that's one good thing about when we're throwing in these gates or we're throwing in the chute. You know, we can just assign a cost in, in, the, in Inventor when we're drawing these up in AutoCAD, and pretty much it just says every time we throw in a 16-foot gate, just assume it's going to be $160. And so we can get a material spec sheet uh, fairly quickly and simply just by 
the nature of using Inventor and AutoCAD to create these 3D, 3D drawings. And so, you know, the, for this facility, you know, we thought, well, it might be if we got a bare minimum of, you know, a little bit of rock on there in that facility. It was like, well, it could be about $1,300, spend at least $800 in geotextile fabric. Uh, the, gate, the gate costs, you know, I was telling them, if you're going to buy, you know, heavy rail gates, and I said heavy rail, but, it's, you know, it could be most likely in the facility, we want to have 14 gauge. I had 16 gauge originally recommended, but we want 14 gauge. Um, you know, really, you'd have to go to one of the gate companies. Uh, down there towards Casey County where you can get like a little better deal if you're buying a fair number of gates. You're buying 23 gates, I'd expect to, if I was talking to any dealership, I'd want to get some type of deal on the gates. But there are a number number of companies down there, all kind of in the same little region, Chubby Bard, uh, Lily Ag Supply, uh, I don't want to forget anybody, uh, Green River Gate. Uh, those are all different places which you can go to get uh, 14 gauge, 16 gauge gates uh, for your facility, maybe, at a more, maybe in a more cost effective manner uh, than going to maybe your local dealership. So it's just something to think about if you're buying that many gates. And so we're, we had everything included because he was looking at building this barn saying it's could be anywhere from 34, 38,000, 58,000. So we, we have the total costs. Uh, something, something I talked about last time, uh, was going to be, uh, labor issues. So if there is, if there is labor issues and we see it more and more, uh, as we go on and I feel like we're going to see it more and more in the future, uh, slam latches can become important. So these would be about $20, $30 investment, but I think they pay themselves off in the fact that you can have fewer people and it takes you less time. You can slam the gate behind you and keep pushing the cattle on forward or keep, move, keep moving. And so I think these can be really important for a lot of different facilities. And I think there, if you have limited help, these can be essential. Uh, this is another, another barn we're looking at for a producer. Um, this one, this one actually um, is a tobacco barn, not, not quite as long, I think it was maybe about uh, 60 foot long, but you know, we only had access to the center alley from each end. So we only had access to the center alley from each end. And so we're trying to figure out what would work for him, for this producer, and I forget which, forget which county this was in, but um, we tried to come up with something that could work for him. And so we put actually, and he had a fair number of panels existing panels to utilize anyway. So for this system, uh, we're trying to, trying to bring the cattle into a sorting area, holding area directly adjacent to the barn. So all this, all this area in here is where I'm trying to represent the barn. Um, so he brings them in this, this, this area adjacent to our barn, brings them from the hillside, and then he's able to potentially sort them, sort at this far end, or sort at the end that would be close to the road. And this would be easy to do the way the gate swings. He might be able to sort it a little easier with these animals. And then he's going to be working these animals from this pen closest to the barn. And you know, something we suggested to the producer as well, if we're going to be putting cattle directly adjacent to the barn, we want to have it um, be ideally geotextile fabric. And we also would like to have gutters on the side of the barn. So avoid issues or as much issues as we can with the, the runoff water. We can just run it down a gutter and get it away from our, where we're holding our cattle would be ideal. So, you know, we have this where we can sort the cattle. Then from this first pen, we're going to move, you know, some of the animals up. Not all, you know, we hold up to 25 animals, but we move a couple animals at a time um, from this first pen into the barn, close our 16 foot gate. We have another, another set of gates here we can help push the animals on in. So it's another 12 foot gate and a six foot gate to help push these animals in. Uh, we push them on in, so we have at the very end of our round before we hit our tub, as we see here, uh, if we go back, we can see this second gate, the second 16-foot gate is going to help actually push the 90-degree 90, 90 uh, tub gate there, so we help have that 16-foot gate to push the other gate, push them closed, so we close that with a slam latch, ideally, and then uh, we push our animals on into our 90-degree our tub, and then on down through here, so we can either and we run them out through this end of the barn here. So like I said, that on, this, on this tobacco barn, the end wasn't open. So we'd want to have something in that corner, a gate in that corner to help funnel the animals out. But um, uh, or another gate to help me you know, avoid that dead corner, help funnel the animals out and get, get them out so we can either recapture them. So we open that 16-foot gate again. So we can either recapture them into this first pin if necessary, or we just run them on out and into the, past, into the fields. 
uh, once that uh, first pin is worked or we need animals from the second pin, we kind of shut this one gate and we're able to funnel the animals in and again, work them through our uh, working facility. So this was an option, we're trying to use that side alley. We, this, this barn originally had a bunch of hay stored in it. And so we're trying to use that side alley, but still allow, he wanted equipment to be parked in that center alley. So we're trying to still maintain the ability to park equipment in that center alley while uh, being able to work cattle. Uh, so one of the options we gave him was he could load, up, load out from this first pin. It was gonna be about 12 foot wide. So I was like, that, that could be an option to load up from this first pin. Uh, ideally, it would almost be the second pin where it's uh, 10 foot wide. Um, alley or holding area that might be a little more ideal um, and you know I, this, this picture was turned around from all the other ones we said you could load out of um, you could load out of that that center alley it's going to be 16 foot wide but it's going to be a lot harder pusher so we said that that could be an option and we talked about it we might want to switch from one 16 foot gate to maybe two two eight foot gates potentially or two 10 foot gates you know depending on how he wants to move his animals out so that was, that was something we talked about uh, potentially, but we ended up saying, well, maybe he should move them out from the side of his barn as opposed to trying to load them out of that 16 foot area where it's harder, it's gonna be harder to really push those animals. Um, and so also, you know, we got our barn center alley here. A small walkthrough gate would be essential for if he's trying to push some of these animals into his facility or push them through his uh, working pen, that could be essential. Um, for, for animal movement and the ease, ease of handling. So this kind of gives a general idea of what we're thinking for this, for this barn. Um, so he's got you know, one, one alley he's pretty much not using, but I think he was gonna try to use that for maybe hay storage. But you know, we, we thought about potentially using that for the cattle as well, but we tried to keep it a simple system, something that he could quickly and easily set up and utilize for his facility. Again, you know, we, we have, you know, we have the economics, we can, you know, we throw the number of gates in there, you know, we have, invent, we can count them or the inventor can pretty much count them and, and get it figured out for us. So, you know, six foot gates, 10 foot gates, 10 foot tub, you know, this, this one he was thinking about maybe spending about $2,800 on a lot of the panels he already had. Um, going back to another example. So this is another example. Um, how uh, we had here so we, this is a different facility I think this is also in Mason County uh, again we see that we're trying to you know push our animals as a slightly smaller barn we weren't quite able to achieve the desired 20-foot alley that we originally wanted but this producer is going to be working the animals by himself and he's only going to be running three or four of the animals in the tub at a time so like well if, if that's all you got that's all you got and so we can't we can't change that cost effectively uh, but, but also in this facility, let me go back a slide. Uh, you know, he had, we added a pure foundation. So his barn was fairly stable, but we went ahead and added this pure foundation here. And we're saying that that could be something he modified to make sure his barn was structurally sound. Um, we, we looked at the roof line, it was fairly straight. You know, Morgan and I were out there evaluating that day and just, it, it, was, it was fairly sound. That's, that's something I, uh, I haven't mentioned yet, but you know, we want to do this in a, a a tobacco barn that's going to be there for a while, not one that's looking ready, like it's going to fall down sometime in the near future. Um, and, and, and ideally, you know, on some of these barns, if, we're, if we can attach it to the foundation or attach it to our peer, you know, post peer, if we attach it to the foundation, that would be ideal as well. Using, um, you know, there's a lot of different methods to attach it, but we, you know, if we can attach it that way, that limits ability. If you get a whole bunch of animals in there pushing, you know, we, we're, we're concerned about them um, negatively impacting the structure of the barn, potentially. Um, so again, the flow, flow of this one works well since he's only one producer. We actually included more gates than we thought would be necessary just because he's gonna be working them, uh, in essence, 90% of the time by himself. So we have the options where he can easily, you know, progressively, you know, push these animals through the facility, you know, one, three, four, five, and, and try to easily work them and, but still maintain the ability to potentially recapture them as well. Uh, this one's a little different, and we, we suggested that he could, you know, he had a 10-foot tub here. Uh, he could potentially use this little bit of space here where the red arrow is going to recapture, uh, or not recapture, but to load out his animals. So that, that being an option for him was to load out, uh, do this, this small gap between the, you know, back of the trail up to here, and then try to use that, all those gates to apply pressure and to potentially load out that way. So that was just one of the options which we came up for this producer. Um, 
we have 12 foot spacing between our, our columns in the barn. You know, we said, well, if you, this producer is really worried about um, maybe the flex of the boards, I was like, well, a gate would be fairly resilient, but, uh, or a, six, a 14, 14 gauge gate would be fairly resilient. But if you want to use boards and maybe tone them in a, a, a four by four uh, post in between them or a six by six post, add that tone load in, that could be an, an option to add increased stability uh, to his working facility between those columns of the barn. Um, and again, we, we came up with approximate cost for him. He had nothing, so I was like, well, you're gonna spend at least 11, 12 grand on your facility, you know, just looking at the middle. Could spend more, could spend less, it just depends on what he can find. Uh, but we, we, do, we do, we can pull out those costs. Uh, I know I'm, I'm getting a little shorter on time here, but uh, this is one more we came up with. This, this guy had a, a trust barn he built specifically for working, working his cattle. And uh, he actually had a foremost chute he was running into. And so we had, again, an alley because you can run down a couple of holding pins in which you can uh, follow the animals in and out, out of the pins easily and progressively uh, shut the animals into these pens. So we got, we got a, a fair number of options if we have producers looking for a couple of different ideas. We have a fair number of options of um, what, they, what they could possibly utilize. Uh, so some of my final thoughts. Um, you know, if we're looking at our our squeeze shoot and head gate, you know, we need to know the approximate, I uh, need the appropriate size for the, size for the number of cattle being worked and prof, approximate size for the, the type of cattle being worked. Uh, if we're working on a working alley, we want it to be at least 20 foot long with backstops, uh, a scale, there are a number of options for scales. Uh, if you want to contact us, we actually have, you know, we have the plans for a kit in which you can, uh, plans for if you do it built yourself for about $700. Uh, you need to have adequate sorting and holding pins for different facilities. Um, potentially some type of loadout shoot or a way to load out your animals. I went through how there are you know, different options. You can have a crowding tub, a funnel, butt box. There's different ways uh, to work your animals. Uh, and oh, something I didn't talk about was, you know, in most of these situations I, I was having you be in with the cattle. For cow calves that work, if you got some feeder calves, maybe you want to be on the, the opposite side of the gate as the cattle. Uh, it really depends on the disposition of your animals, um, and we can maybe talk about that in future future webinars and just you know what we can do to you know depending on the disposition where you need to be as far in reference to the cattle. Uh, avoiding those sharp turns and sharp edges, trying to avoid those, minimize the maximize throughput, minimize injury to the animals, and you know just reiterating once again while we have these facilities to cheap to achieve our management goals to keep ourselves and the cattle safe and to save time and energy. So with that, uh, are there any questions? Well, I wanna I want thank everybody for attending this webinar today. And if you do have any questions, feel free to email me or find, uh, or call me, you know, just find somebody to get a hold of me or, or Morgan, and we'll try to take care of your, come out and do a farm visit, whatever may be required. But uh, thanks, thanks again to everybody for attending today. And um, if you have any questions, just let me know.